what is going on everybody my name is ghost today i will be going through a top 10 tips for beginner list here for escape from tarkov uh starting at number 10 we're gonna go to go over the controls here uh so if you go into your settings there is a controls tab up in the upper right and what i like to recommend people do is that you change some of these settings around now if you have a mouse that has buttons on the side uh my leaning uh ability goes on to those mouse keys uh, so the reason why i do that is when i'm aiming i can easily lean now it's also personal preference on what you guys like to do uh, so i would definitely recommend going through this list and seeing what you would and wouldn't change i change other things like uh, some scopes have multiple uh, magnifications and that is where i would uh, go in and change that stuff um other than that, it's free reign for you guys, so that's a pretty simple one, but it's most of the time it is overlooked. A lot of people will stick with the default set out, uh, and a lot of the top uh, players will actually go in here and mess with these settings so that it is a lot more comfortable for them. So that's uh, pretty much it for the controls, and we will move on to the next one. All right, guys, coming in at nine, it's going to be the hot bar usage. Uh, so when you are in your character screen here where you're kidding out your your player uh, down here, you have this hot bar. Now, the quick use hot bar is always going to put things in here. So number two is going to be your primary gun. Number three will be your backup gun. If you have a pistol that will go in your number one slot and whatever you have in your scabbard, uh, either at a knife an axe, whatever is in here will be that V key unless you again change it in your settings like from the last number. So an easy way of using the rest of these, what I like to do is use the health items. So what you can do is you can click the number four on your keyboard or what you can also do is you can drag it down to the bar here and place it wherever you want it. So it's pretty simple. I like to just press the buttons because it's quicker. Um, and you can do this with a lot of things. So if I open up my meds case here and pull out, say, painkillers, uh, this will be uh, gone over in a later uh, number, but I could click five. So now I have health healing here and things for pain and stuff like that at number five. And it's pretty simple. Uh, you can customize a lot with this. You can put grenades in here if you would like, and you could customize those. Uh, it just depends on all what you want to mess around with. Now, what you can't do is put an item in here and try and put it on your hot bar it does have to be either in your tactical rig or in your pockets or on your character on this side uh, mainly in these weapon slots so uh, no weapon slots will go above three and anything that is in these tactical rigs can also I don't believe they can go yeah they cannot go into your quick use because that is taken up by these four items here so that is it for the hot bar. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but very, very useful. Uh, I will now put up a clip of kind of how useful it is uh, when you're kind of in a situation on simply just clicking the button and being able to heal versus clicking right click and clicking use item in the raid. Where? Do you have a grenade? Yes, sir. My chest is blacked out now. He's way deeper than in that. I'm about to be out of my stepping on grass. Glass, you mean? Is that him stepping on glass? No, that's me. Got Are him. you in the show? He's, He's dead. I need his healing. All right, guys, coming in at number eight, it is going to be how to best optimize your stash. Now, when we go into character here, this right hand side, that is going to be your stash. Mine is going to be a little bit bigger than a lot of newer players because you were most likely going to get the $45 version. So the best way to optimize your stash, it's very simple. So when you get guns, you just double click on them. And then what you can do is you can actually pull parts of these off. And I will go over this later on in the top 10 on how to optimize weapons and how to get them out but simply for the sake of dealing with your stash if you see here these weapons take up an, a number of these square boxes so this hk takes up a four by two for a total of eight 
So if we go into it, we can take out the magazine. And then if you take out the pistol grip, it shortens that gun down to a one by four. And what you can do is you open up one slot. Now this doesn't seem like a lot, but when you have a bunch of guns and you don't have that much space to deal with, if you do this for all your guns, you open up a quite a bit uh, of space. Another thing of what you can do as well is if you buy these cases and eat, oops, sorry, let me get rid of this gen four. If you buy cases, you can get things like ammo containers that allow you to hold things like ammunition in them. Pistol cases will allow you to hold magazines, pistols, etc. Now there are these new things that they added recently called thick cases. And these are essentially, uh, a a uh, stash in itself so you can put these containers inside of here they will take up a slot but when you double click into them similar to like a backpack they will have more slots for you to be able to put guns and things like that in. some do uh, do things like this medical case up here uh, only allow you to put medical supplies in it so as you see how much space I save by taking up a 3x3 three I can put this many medical items in this. So cases are also another important way of uh, being able to best optimize your stash. Uh, and I will kind of briefly explain that also later on how you can get some of them and purchasing some of them also. So that is pretty much it for optimizing your stash. Oh, another thing uh, is backpacks. You can put backpacks inside of each other um, to also optimize space. So as long as there is nothing else inside this backpack, I can go ahead and place these inside themselves. So there we go. Pretty straightforward. And I can, uh, now save all that space of not having to put backpacks. Now, if you are also really, really tight on space, uh, and you really in it, it makes sense to put other things inside of a backpack. Say you have some armors that you want to put inside of a backpack. And then you're like, you know what? I could also put this gun inside of my backpack. And you put the gun inside your backpack. And you just made up a little bit of space. You can do that too. Just remember when you go to use them uh, that you take out the items. That way you're not going into raids accidentally with, uh, with the items still uh on your character because that would be pretty bad if you go and you accidentally die and you lose all that stuff so that's pretty much it for stash management guys we will move on now to number seven all right guys coming in at number seven are going to be scav runs uh and how they differ from your pmc runs so when you come in to click escape from tarkov to choose what you want to do you'll have your pmc which is your player make character uh, this is what you choose to kit your character out as. Uh, and then they have something here called scav. So what scav essentially is, is it is a pre-made character that their loadouts change constantly. Uh, so basically, they the game randomizes what is on this character. You click uh, scav, you'll click next, you'll click what map you want to go to, and then you'll ready up. You can play with friends uh, as a scav but it only allows you to do a group of four versus a PMC group can do a group of five. Now, basically what uh, scabs also can do, what is a nice little thing about them is the AI in the map, which are also called scabs, uh, they do not attack you unless one, they are part of a scab boss uh, group or scab boss themselves, or you kill a scab within their, like they have a range uh, so basically what a lot of people will do is they will leave scavs up and what you will also see people do is if they are a player scav, they will wiggle back and forth at you, basically leaning back and left and right, meaning they want to friend you and work together to try and kill PMCs. Now, a lot of good scav, uh, raid locations. Uh, that I enjoy running are one is interchange. Uh, it is a big mall uh, and it has a lot of good lootable items. Uh, a lot of the time there is a scab boss called killer there and he will hunt everybody down. Um, he is brutal, uh, but he is a lot of fun if you're able to kill him. Uh, so if you have a really good scab loadout, 
uh, especially uh, close quarters scavs interchange is really good for you uh, factory would also be another good one for scavs just because it's very high intensity high pace uh, and there's generally a lot of dead bodies everywhere when you you spawn in also a good note for scavs is you do not spawn in at the beginning of the raid like a PMC does a PMC will have the maximum amount of raid time uh, so each map has its own raid times available to it however uh, scavs do not they spawn in different waves so you can spawn in early in the the raid when people are dying and things like that um, or you can spawn in with 10 15 minutes left to go in the raid and you kind of got to hustle and do a lot of things quickly now another side note to have is you only spawn into maps that have at least one pmc alive in it so when you spawn in as a scav uh, know that there is at least one PMC player that is still on the map. Now, they could go and exfil at any point, uh, so it doesn't mean they will always be there when you're there, uh, but just a good side note to know is they will always be there. Uh, and then we will move on, since we are kind of on this map selection, we will move on to number six, is what maps to play first. Now, I recommend for new players to play things like Interchange, customs in factory and a lot of this will also be covered in questing uh, which we will go over here shortly um, but a lot of the maps that are kind of friendlier to newer players in a way are these three maps they're very simple layouts um, factory is a very fast paced map because it is very tight it's very small um, and a lot of people generally go there just to kind of pvp in a way uh, interchange has some very good loot. It has multiple sections to it. Uh, it has three floors. It's got the top top floor in the mall itself. It has the main mall floor and then it actually has a basement where it's like a parking garage. And there's a lot of things to loot down there as well. Uh, and scavs throughout. There is a scav boss here called Killa. I'll try and pop a picture up here on the side just so you can kind of see him. And Killa is kind of this badass high armored uh lmg user i believe he uses an lmg the rpk it's the only one in the game right now uh and he he's a uh, really good fun and uh really challenging whereas in customs uh there is another boss in this one uh but he has like this gang of ruffians that run with him as well so it's him and a bunch of other guys and his guys are more armored the boss doesn't really have too much armor but the bosses do have more health than a normal player and then like i said factory is very fast paced uh woods is going to be this massively wide open kind of like long range a lot of people come here to snipe uh type map uh the lab is going to be for pmcs only uh basically you have to buy a key card from therapist uh, to get in and when you buy the key card you put it on your character you go in and that one is more for I would say that players that kind of understand and know what they're doing um, then you have shoreline uh, which is kind of a little bit of both uh, between the woods and interchange uh, there's a lot of outdoor section, a lot of long distance sections, but there is this big massive medical facility uh, that is very tight quarters and has a lot of good loot in it. Um, unfortunately for this one, it is a lot of the good loot is locked behind keys uh, and keys is something we will also go uh, more in depth here later on. But uh, this one I would wait uh, if you're a newer player until one you have a quest to do there or uh, you either find some keys for it or you f find a group of players that has keys for it so other than that that is kind of like my rundown of all the maps on uh, if you're a newer player I would just stick between interchange customs and factory and then slowly start doing some quests uh, because customs and factory are a lot in the beginning questing areas uh, and other than that, you know, good luck, guys, and uh, we'll move on to the next number. All right, guys, coming in at number five, I'm just going to simply go over the vendors, what to sell to them, and what the levels mean. 
So when you come into trading up at the top, you'll have dealers, the flea market and the auction isn't currently in the game. Uh, so you'll have these two options, uh, at least for now before point 12, we don't know if auctions are coming in point 12, more than likely not, but we'll just go over what is in the game currently, uh, pre point 12. So the dealers, each one of these, uh, dealers has kind of a niche that they're for. So Prat 4 sells Russian styled weapons, uh, parts and things like that. Now, when it comes to levels, uh, you will gain reputation with them by doing their quests, uh, how much money you spend with them and what your current character level is. So when you do quests, this number here, that has kind of the arrow on the bars. That is your reputation score. It will go up. This is how much money uh, you have spent is the top number on the far right. And the, the number below is what you need to spend before you reach the next level. As well as the level requirement and then what it will become. So I will max out Prat 4 when I hit level 33 and spend 300,000 more, uh, sorry, not dollars more rubles uh, with him. And there are three currency types. There are rubles, euros, and dollars. And there are some that do use different uh, currencies. So Prapor uses uh, rubles primarily. Uh, and when you level him up, so at level one, he will only have a certain amount of things. And when you level him up to the next one, he will gain more unlockables. And some things are also unlocked via his tasks. So. When you do tasks for them, you are awarded uh, experience. Uh, a lot of the times you are also awarded reputation, some money, and you, generally an item. Uh, what you can also do is unlock uh, items for purchase. So some things are locked behind a quest line before you can constantly purchase them. Now there are ways around this, which I'll go over once I'm done explaining them. Um, but just kind of going through each and every one of them real quick on what they do. Therapist does medical supplies. Uh, she does some of these containers as well that we briefly touched, like the item container and the scav junk box. Fence here, he's kind of useless. Um, there's not really a need for him uh, right now. He kind of used to be a stand in flea market before it became a thing, but he is pretty much useless now. You can find random stuff here. Uh, every now and then that is kind of good, uh, but you take a chance. It's not always here um, and sometimes it's not always the best uh, the best stuff here because like this is uh, zero armor points, but you would buy it for 66,000 and you wouldn't know that. So yeah, there's a lot of random stuff inside a fence and he's kind of useless. So I would try to avoid using him the most. The only thing you'd really sell to him is like knives and other things you can't sell to other vendors. Skier, he's going to be kind of a, a mix. He sells a lot of parts uh, for weapons. Uh, he primarily specializes in the Vepers, ADARs, shotguns, and SKSs. Uh, he has a few other weapons like the hunters and things like that, but he primarily you do a lot of like uh, parts from skier. Uh, he has a lot of fun quests as well uh, that will unlock a lot of good weapon parts later on in the game when you get into weapon building. Moving on to Peacekeeper, he's kind of the quote-unquote American NATO person uh, that he uses dollars. You only purchase things from him through dollars. And the way to do that is you click here in dollars and you can convert your rubles into dollars. So if you want a hundred dollars, it's going to cost you $11,464 or rubles. So that is the exchange rate there. Uh, they will, he will sell later on things like M4s and things like that. But NATO American stylized weapons is primarily what he does. I just need to spend a little bit more money with him and I will rank him up. Uh, mechanic, he's very uh, into the rare guns and a lot of the times he sells fully kitted weapons for items like bitcoins. Uh, other vendors do do this as well, but they generally don't do it this uh, heavy like mechanic does. Um, a lot of the items he trades for are these bitcoins, uh, but they are fully decked out 
uh, fully optimized weapons. Now there are better ways to optimize these weapons, but they are definitely better than their stock counterparts. So that's pretty much mechanic. A lot of the time I will sell my broken down weapons to him uh, because weapons do sell to him the most. Now Ragman is going to kind of be your clothing guy. Uh, he will sell you your backpacks, uh, your vests, helmets. You have your armbands here for if you're running with friends and you want to be able to determine uh, who is a friend and who is not a friend. Uh, and we'll sell all the parts in between, you know, like uh, the visors and things like that. So he's pretty much your clothing guy. Uh, he's really good to use. Um, but a lot of the time, too, you will find a lot of that stuff in the uh, raids. Now, briefly going over flea market uh, real quick here. Basically, you can search for an item and then buy it. So if I wanted a Colt M4A1 assault rifle, I could click on that and go, hmm, all right. So these are all being sold by other players is the thing. So they will mark um, what they want for the weapon. So if I wanted to say buy this M4, I would pay this player 65,000 uh, rubles and I would just click purchase and it would it would do it for me. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So once you figure out item names and what you need, um, you can search it up here and buy it from other players. But for that, that's pretty straightforward. That is kind of the vendors, uh, how to sell and what to sell to them. And uh, pretty much all that is. So we will move on to number four. Uh, which is going to be modding weapons and things like that. So I will see you over there. All right, guys, moving on to number four, we're going to just briefly go over how to mod weapons and uh, how to make them a little bit better. So we will compare both of these DT MDRs. So this one is kind of a stock MDR. Uh, as you can see here, it has these uh, stats for it. It's going to have its vertical recoil, horizontal recoil, and things along those natures. Now, when you add more items to it, these numbers will change. So, I added a uh, foregrip, or not a foregrip, excuse me. I added a RK2, which is a, yeah, it's a Zenit RK2 foregrip. Sorry, I was shouldn't have said second guess myself and basically what that does is if you see the numbers there they're going to change so 69 and 191 whereas when i put this back on those are going to lower 64 179 so it does help uh you can find more and more things to kind of mix and match on you know what is good what isn't good what's better and also a lot of this stuff also deals with what is your personal preference uh i know some people can use certain weapons better when they maybe don't have a uh, a grip on the front because they've learned how to control the spray and things like that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So there are certain things as well that you will you will learn along the way that certain um, like handguards require things. So like this handguard here requires you to have this low profile gas block there are a couple low profile gas blocks but you cannot have a regular gas block on an m4 for it to work um so and when a gun is red like this it means it's not operationable so or operable excuse me um you need to be able to uh make sure the weapon is colored in before you can bring it into a raid it will not be usable uh if it does not uh, have everything so if it is red like that it also you cannot equip it if vital parts are missing and that is what that red means there that's pretty the much the simple straightforward one i will be making a video to kind of go more in detail into weapon modding and things like that because there's so much i could go up on hours and hours of it uh before we finally go over everything but just know that um, also when you uh, double click on an item, that, like say a part, there's this section that says compatible with available. If you highlight this, it'll tell you what it is compatible with in your stash. So all you have to know is uh, 
to make sure that it's all good you just highlight that and it'll tell you every single time when it comes to a weapon part um another thing of what you can do is some weapons require mounts uh and what you can do is if you right click on them and do a linked search what you, what'll come up is all the items that will also be compatible with it that will be compatible with your weapons so just know that uh, it's pretty simple um, but that is the very quick easy way to modding weapons and that is how you will get things like sights and things like that onto your weapons uh, so just kind of play around with it uh, find uh, find what works for you and then go out and raid guys I will see you in the next number all right guys we're gonna be hopping into number three right now and that's gonna be questing uh, and leveling uh, basically there are these things called tasks and these are going to be the quests for the vendors these are how you level up the vendors like how we went over a couple numbers back so you'll have this quest it'll give you a brief explanation of what it is and then it kind of tells you here you know find a letter on a messenger in the factory now there are, if you don't want to try and figure some of these out yourselves there are uh, links in the description uh, below of a couple things that I recommend and uh, channels that have gone over the questing uh, there are people like deadly slob who are very good at doing uh, quest by quest steps on how to do certain things where they are and things like that also the EFT wiki is very nice uh, it's very well ran um, so their links will be in the description down below as well uh, and they're very good tools to use when you're doing these quests uh, some are very simple you know like find in raid four car batteries so in raids when you're raiding if you see four car batteries uh, pick them up and bring them back and give them to her and you will uh, you'll need four of those and find in raid eight spark plugs uh, and to know when you have found an item in raid, it will have a check mark next to it. Uh, so this item I did not find in raid, I bought from something. This item, however, I did find in raid because it has this little check mark. When you highlight it, it says item found in raid. So that is how you will know the difference uh, between those. Uh, when it says found in raid, you cannot purchase those items from things like the flea market or from these dealers. Just so you guys are aware. Um, but that's the pretty quick explanation of questing and how it's done now how to accept them um, is when you go uh, into them initially you'll click on their tasks and they will show up here and you will need to click accept up here in the the top and then it's pretty straightforward you go out and you do your quests when you're done with them you will come back and click complete and they will give you your rewards down here in the little messenger uh, icon and then when you click it you would click receive all and then a box like this will show up on the right hand side and you will just drag it all over your uh, items that you essentially completed and got from that quest so we will now move on to number two guys number two is going to be offline rating what it is why it's useful things like that so I'll just quickly show you guys how to do it and what it is so when you click your PMC, you're going to click next. You're going to go, hmm, I've never done maybe the map factory. So you're going to choose a time phrase, uh, phase, excuse me. And basically, factory is the only one that stays standard, and the lab kind of stays standard, but there's certain things with the lab. But uh, So factory. These phases will stay the same. Everything else is in military time and will change. So there are night day cycles. There are weather conditions and things like that. Um, so it is in military time. And if you don't know how to tell military time, well, you better learn quick. It's a 24 hour clock. Just think of it like that. So this is 3.30 in the morning and this is going to be 3.30 at night. Generally, these numbers are 12 hours apart. So when you click next, uh, if you do not have a map in your inventory, it's fine. Um, this is the the page you will be looking for. Enable offline mode for this rig. So in offline mode, nothing that happens in there saves. So if your character dies, you don't lose any of your stuff. Um, the ammo you expend doesn't actually happen and any items that you get, you do not actually get. 
and you can set certain things to this if you want scavs in there to like warm up and practice you can enable pve or you can just completely click that off if you want to do a run through of the map so then you would click next and then you would click ready and you would load into the map uh, it's pretty straightforward i like it when new maps come out uh to basically do run throughs of them to be able to see what is there and things like that so we will move on now guys to the number one thing which is very important and i will show it now all right guys the number one tip that i can give a lot of new players and i know this is going to sound easier said than done and it's going to be about gear fear now what gear fear is is the fear of losing your gear that you have collected throughout your time raiding and things like that now you've spent countless hours finally getting up to this uh loadout and things like that now i used to have gear fear and a lot of players have gear fear or have had it so basically what a lot of players kind of overcome is one just because you lose it doesn't mean you can never get it back again it's great to when you first get your first M4 or you get your first nice set of body armor and things like that. But don't be afraid to build up a bit of loot and then to use that good, those good items because those good items can help you get other good items. I've been using this loadout for I think the last six or so raids and have lived through all of them. Uh, because I've used the better gear whereas if I wasn't using it I would have died in probably five of them. So getting over that gear fear that that thing that's always going to be in the back of your mind is I don't want to lose my gear. I don't want to lose any of this. Try to get out of that habit. It's going to take a little bit. It took me a little bit to get over it. But I, you will enjoy EFT way more when you are playing loose and not afraid of losing your gear uh, than always playing the I don't want to lose my gear way of playing EFT. Uh, that is the number one tip I can give you guys. Um, just go out, have fun, raid, loot, bring some of your friends in if you're really enjoying the game. And just have fun, guys. EFT is a newer game. It's one of my favorite games right now. Uh, Battlestate is doing a very good job of updating it and listening to us. And in all honesty, guys, have fun with the game. That's what it's here for. That's what we play games for. And I hope this video helped you guys. Uh, in any way shape or form if it did leave a comment down below uh, if you want more uh, content of what or I guess what I should touch more into anything on this list I have a couple of video ideas of what I want to already but if you guys yourselves like this video and want me to go more in detail with certain things leave a comment down below leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel for later EFT content anyway guys my name is Ghost, I appreciate you all, and I will see you guys on the battlefield.